Hey guys, welcome to episode 40 of Profit Talk. Um, tonight it's all about networking and making connections and business relationships and that kind of thing. Um, I don't know why my camera is doing so crappy, but... Because your internet is crappy. My internet is not crappy. My internet is fabulous. I'm not in... BFE anymore. Yeah, I don't have my spotlight shining directly on me today, so. Well, I made up for it because I have like the halo of God or whatever. I know, right? <laughs> you, you have the light of rapture. But the lights in here are on a dimmer. I mean, I could probably get fancy, but I mean, it's yeah. Oh wait, I gotta mute. Ah, mute. Ah, I was watching. I've been doing online arbitrage all day. Really? Yes. Tell us what and you And I'm like, my eyes are on fire. Like, I just want to go to bed. Yeah, right. I've just been sitting there going through so much stuff, and my eyes just burn. I mean, did you find <laughs> stuff? Did you actually buy stuff and find deals yeah. and crap like that? Yep. Nice. So the UPS man's going to be backing up to the door or whatever and. Oh, maybe he'll get the rest of that ice dam out of my front driveway. <laughs> that would be excellent. <laughs> Back the truck through. Bag it up. <laughs> Bag it up. Hold up. I heard somebody like out back like scraping ice today, and I was like, sweet, one of the neighbors is in my back drive. And I looked out, and they weren't. They were the shared part of the driveway, because like, we have an easement with our neighbors, so they can use the driveway to get down to their garages. <laughs> And then it comes back up under my house, and they weren't. They were doing their part. That's awesome. Paul, do you have snow? I mean, you live in Colorado, but I guess that's probably a dumb question. But Right now? Yeah. None. It's been, it's been like really 60 warm. and sunny every day here. It was 60 here today, and I left the house with long underwear underneath everything and wool socks because my daughter needed to go to the mall and the pet store and all that. We get in the car, and I'm like, oh, dear God. It was starting to snow just a little bit tonight, and it was like, uh, annoying. Yeah, but it got cold really fast, too. That was also annoying. But, I don't know. It's supposed to be, like, decent the rest of the week, I think. I yeah, know. we were, like, 30 today. We, um, we had our little snow. Yeah, and it was really Danica is, she I brought her internet with her from Tennessee. Frozen up. Okay, sorry. I, I don't understand. I don't know. You brought your internet with you from Tennessee, didn't you? I did not. <laughs> I loved that satellite dish so much, I just put it in the back of the car and left. Hey, is Wade here? Today's his birthday. His, today's his birthday. Yeah. Happy Where birthday, is he? Wade. Happy birthday, Wade. I think it's Dana's. Wasn't it Dana's, too? Yeah, a couple days ago. A week ago, maybe. It's hard to keep up, man, when you've got... No, see, it is. It's Dana's birthday, too. Wait, Dana's birthday is today? Yeah. I, don't I, thought, know. I, I thought I saw that when I scrolled up. Apparently I need to learn how to use Facebook or something. Oh, look, Wade Harris' birthday is today. Yeah. I saw Wade's notification. I didn't see Dana's. I don't get them all. Like, I know. They'll give you, well, that. when you get like 10 a day, you know, because you're just so popular and you have so many friends. I, mean, I know. It's horrible. <laughs> Yeah, no. I don't know why, um, I don't know. I don't know why I don't get everything. I don't know what that's about. And I don't know why, I don't know. I guess I have to buy a new camera. I mailed out. Um, I would have to go priority. Why did text C9... That sounds like a postal clerk that didn't get the update. I would have probably Country Girl and kept frame bites watching the replay and didn't catch the live chat. Country Girl asked postage question. I mailed out some personal packages today. The postal clerk told me that one of the packages had to go priority because it was over thirteen ounces. Um, number one, that's an ignorant postal clerk. I would have probably asked for the postmaster or the supervisor or made them pull out their DMM. They love it when you say that. What is DMS? Secondly, why are you not doing online postage? 
Wait, what's DMM? The Domestic Mailing Manual, and it's this god-awful book that's the size of four New York phone books, and it is every rule and regulation for the post office, and it constantly changes and updates, and, and they hate it because it's like trying to find something in a New York phone book. <laughs> that is the standard. That's pretty funny. It is their standard, yeah. And you can read online, too. I would probably print it out to them. And, I mean, if that's the same clerk you're dealing with every time, I would definitely. It just sounds like an ignorant clerk, but. Um, that never goes well. I actually, speaking of new cameras, I actually broke down and ordered a new webcam. So everybody in the audience that always makes fun of me for my webcam, you'll be happy to know because I found a seller on eBay that had a really good deal on the whatever model that's going to make me look as bright and crisp as Paul. I would I say yeah. crisp when I don't have a light directly in my face. Are you going to use a filter? Whoa. That's echoing like crazy. Why am I echoing? Because you turned us up so loud. No, that's my normal volume. Okay, let me turn you back down. How's that? <laughs> uh, well, now I forgot. Oh, I was going to ask if you were going to filter the rapture light. <laughs> the... Mike is all well, or the camera is all well and good, but what you really need is a really expensive condenser mic. I mean, that's what's going to really put you over the top. Are you going to try to sell me one? <laughs> I got one on what? Amazon. <laughs> I'll give you a nice uh, discount code for it. I was like, what? I would never. Uh, he got mad. Everybody's dropping out. I didn't realize. Look, you just like you Dusty shamed him out so badly. Talking. You shamed him so badly that now he had to leave. <laughs> <laughs> He's so embarrassed that he had to go. I know, right? That's oh cool. no! And now he can't get back. What? He joined, it joined. He joined and immediately got kicked back out. Oh no! There we go. Here he comes. Yeah, when you plug in something new, can you hear me? Is that bad? Yeah. When you plug in something new, you have to refresh the Hangout, and then it wouldn't let me back in, so whatever. I, I scored these. Play Call of Duty. I scored these for a dollar at one of Chad's little junk stores in Florida. They're Plantronics. They're ugly. I don't do headsets. I've, I haven't worn headphones in 20 years. I used to love my Plantronics. I feel like I should be directing air traffic or something. I got some Creative Fatality headset. That was pretty cool, but it was a pain in the butt to get it to work right. Paul froze. Uh, no, I just wasn't talking. Oh, no, you were, like, sitting in the same, like, head down position forever. I thought you were frozen. Okay, so networking. Is that right? You guys want to start with networking or? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's sir. <laughs> No. No. Um, take it. Go. I, what about I housing? think I think that networking, like we talk about like the conferences and things like that, and that the most important thing you'll ever get from one of the conferences is the networking that you do with the other resellers. To me, you get all these little tidbits, these little nuggets, you know, that people drop when you're just kind of hanging out. You know, if you know resellers in your area, go out to dinner with them or, you know, start local hangouts or whatever like that. I think it's fantastic. We actually um, have a local, a couple of local hangouts. It's funny, one of the guys, or I went to a local hangout like a year ago, and one of the main guys there knew who I was when I walked in. And he, you guys know Denver Pickerer? Have you ever seen him in the chat? He hasn't been around lately, but he used to be in the chats all the time. And all the shows, but yeah, he was he was there, and he was a pretty cool dude. That's cool. You got recognized. I know. That was like the only time ever. <laughs> That's pretty cool, though. But it, I don't know. I think I know so many, like so many people in our community, seem to be like extremely distrustful of other resellers, and and everything is all secretive, and you know, oh, that person's gonna steal this or steal that, or you know what I mean? Like, everybody's so distrustful of everybody. You know, I feel like I got recognized once in a bad way. I was, like, in a... I told you guys this story tonight when I was in a Goodwill, and this dude, like, walks around the corner, and he sees me, 
And then he just all of a sudden got this mean look on his face, came up, grabbed my cart, pushed it into the shelf, and then just walked <laughs> by me, just mean mugging me the whole time. And I, was just like, I didn't know what to think. I was like, did that just happen? And Holy I crap. really, he just, but, but yeah, when he, as he was walking by, he's just like, fuck you. I was like, that's really? awesome. <laughs> really? Oh. Holy cow. Well, so he doesn't know, you know, about the whole jujitsu thing then, I guess. <laughs> Maybe he, he hasn't does. watched that much. I don't know. I don't Judo know. Judo oh. chop. Wow. Yeah. Do the whole spider monkey thing that That's you like did. That's like the closest I've ever come to having wow. to use it, I feel like. <laughs> but, yeah, I was like... I would. I don't think I would have known what to do either. I think I just kind of would have been slack-jawed for a second. Like, yeah, I was. I was like, uh... <laughs> okay. I'd have been looking for the punked camera or something. Yeah. Like, uh... Exactly. It's like, am I being filmed? Am I on video right now? <laughs> Is somebody making a... Like no a doubt. Video? But, mm -hmm. I don't know. That was weird. That is weird. That's... So, don't network with that guy. But... Yeah. Holy crap. But I mean, YouTube's a networking thing. Half the I know so many people from YouTube that, like, if I wouldn't have started doing YouTube, then I would never would have met mm -hmm. them, started talking to them. They wouldn't know who I am, you know. I mean, it's kind of cool. People that, you know, now, just because of what I've been doing, I can send messages to people and they'll actually answer me. It's a little different than, you know, when somebody that they've never heard of tries to talk to them, you know. Yeah. Well, that... Like, that, for me, that's, I think that's more important even than for me to find local people, like, because we always live in a small town. No matter where we go, we're in a small town, so it's not like I'm going to have that many local people anyway, so I would rather have a large network of people that I know online that I can, you know, like, like, if I had, a, I mean, like, I could, there are people that I could message like, I was doing online arbitrage all day today. And I know that if I got stuck, I could message Chris and say, this is what I'm doing. I am so stuck. Help. You know, and he would message me back. And had we not been doing this kind of thing, I never would have, you know I what I mean? Buddy. I would never be able to do that. Well, it was like the old days of, of reselling before, you know, the last couple of years when Facebook and all that came around with reselling and, and all that. I mean, you didn't have anywhere to go. If you had a question, you went to the eBay forums or the, yeah. you know, with Amazon, you went to the Amazon forums and tried to get a decent answer, you know. A straight answer. A straight answer, and then you get 550 different answers from people you don't even know, so you don't know who to trust or who knows what they're talking about and who doesn't know what they're talking about. If I had to rely on the Amazon seller forums, I would, no. It would be over. There's good information there. You just have to have thick skin. There are they're worse than Reddit. <laughs> worse than Reddit? I don't they get are. That. I mean, dude. I think I honestly think that they are worse than the people on Reddit. I Not mean, bad. I've never even gone to the Amazon. I've never needed to. I like the reason that I started selling on Amazon is because I was in the Hangouts every day, talking, and they were like, "Yeah, you need to start doing Amazon, and this is what you do." And then they walked me through a couple shipments, and then mm -hmm. it's like, "Wow, that was easy." And then. I mean, I just did it. I've, and anytime I have a question, I'm just like, uh, hey, what do you guys think about this? And then I get an answer within a couple of minutes. I had someone that I was trying to help. And I don't even remember what it was. I don't remember. It was, you know, you help somebody and it's like every little thing, like there's, there's no effort on their part to try to figure something out. Yes. So I said, you know, hey, you know there's the Amazon seller forums. That would probably be a good place to, you know, to type in your, you know, whatever it is that's wrong and see what other people have said, you know. And I went and typed in the question, and it was like, like I felt like it was like just a bunch of trolls. <laughs> and like, you know what I mean? Like there were very few that were actually helpful. Mm -hmm. so I don't know. I would be scared to death to go there. Yeah. What are they talking about? Wisconsin. 
I have a different view of Wisconsin now that I watch Making of a Murderer. It's crazy, <laughs> isn't it? Like this, and those are some back. And I know that you know, but it just made me realize, you know, people make fun of Alabama. There's rednecks, whatever. I know that's everywhere. Yeah, you, know, you go far enough off the grid in any state, and you're gonna find that was some. Those are that was some, that whole family was kind of interesting. Yeah, that's crazy. That was a pretty good little ten part mini series. We knocked that out in like two nights. It was, it was like weird. two o'clock in the morning. She's like, one more episode. One more episode. <gasps> Hot Mama. Hot Mama's in the chat. Yeah, because you can actually chat on Yeah, you a lot of things, a lot of technology's changed since you've been gone, Danica. <laughs> no, you can you can actually she's chat. In, you can live chat. chat. No, because now you can live chat on the iPhone from the YouTube app and you couldn't do oh. that before. Oh wow, you can do that now? Yeah. Yeah, you can't on I still try on Android. I can never The iPhone lets you do it now, so. Huh. Pretty cool. Actually, the deliverance was filmed in North Georgia. <laughs> Somebody said deliverance in Alabama. We need to do a we need to do a Wisconsin meetup. Just get on meetup.com and create like a eBay sellers or Amazon. No, I don't want other group. people, just people that I know. Uh, well, no, but then you These people. tell everybody that you know about the group, and then they join it, and then maybe some other people will tag along, and you get to meet some new people. Yeah, but once you do it like a little farther south, like Kentucky <laughs> or Tennessee, no. I'm not driving all the way. How you far Wisco is Wisconsin? I said a Wisconsin one. There's a bunch of us. A now. bunch of us live here. Danica did not say an Alabama meetup. You can make your own damn meetup. No. Nobody you ever does. Come to my meetup. Nobody ever does like an like an ecom or anything. There's never anything that's like, hey, let's do it centrally located, like middle of the Chicago. United States or yeah. Well, I mean, Chicago, I guess, kind of would be. It's but so there's... cheap to fly into Chicago though, from just about anywhere. Except for Huntsville, Alabama, it's not cheap. It's one of the most ex top ten most expensive international airports in the United States. It's so ridiculous. Drive up to Nashville. Yeah, and then you got to pay to park your car, and by the time you figure all that in, parking your car for seven oh my days, God, it's just that, no, it's like you might as well just fly out of Huntsville. <laughs> it's wow. so bad. It's so bad that somebody started a shuttle service, and they have a shuttle bus that runs from Huntsville to Nashville Airport. You tell them when you want to go, they'll pick you back up. They'll arrange Shut it, up. and when you fly back, in, it's like forty nine dollars round trip. We'll do that. <sighs> I'm not flying. Why am I even flying? Fly what are you into, talking about? Where am I flying? Fly into Milwaukee and I'll pick you up. <laughs> Boom. Nashville to Milwaukee. Hold on. That would work. And then Paul can come. I have spare bedrooms. Yeah. What are you That's looking at? Oh, you're looking at plane tickets. I'm supposed to go to that. Uh, Midwest. Chad's been trying to get me to do that. How far is that from you, Paul? It's far enough that it would be a pain in the ass. I mean, it would be a plane ticket and a weekend in a hotel and all that stuff. Where? Uh, it's the one that you went to last year. Oh, the Econ? Yeah. Dude, that is the... super fun, though. It was yeah, really cool. I, I just, I don't think I'll even be here. No? Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's on my birthday, and it's... Ow. I mean, not that I don't want to spend my birthday with a bunch of people that I think are awesome from YouTube land, but... Yeah. I got but... family, too, you know. Not like my birthday's that big of a deal, but... Sure it is. It's not like my birthday. Exactly. <laughs> wow. I mean, because it's New Year's Eve, you goof. Whatever, you goof. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Tristan's coming up here, by the way. Oh, she is? Yeah. Awesome. I was just saying. 300 bucks round trip. There. Boom. From Alabama? From, that was from Huntsville. Actually, let me change that. What's Nashville? B&A? <laughs> Probably the same sucks. price from uh, Denver, actually. <laughs> Yeah, so Nashville. It's about Nashville. the same distance, I think. 
you could come up here and get your beer and bacon cheese curds. That's a perfect excuse. I'm saying. Uh, anyway, networking, business things. Um, you know, networking for me is not as much about buying things off other resellers, although it does lead to that. I'm not real. You were talking about people are afraid to open up or share. I, I, I mean, I think it depends. You learn. You know, you got to get to know people. I'm not just going to open up and share all my bolo secrets with people I don't know necessarily. No, I don't mean like. I mean like, like when somebody has an idea, like the whole coloring book thing. You right. know, people are like so guarded and and you know, I've got an idea for something, but I can't, I can't tell anybody because then somebody will just steal it from me. Well, you know I mean, what? Sometimes if you're the only one with the idea and you try to launch it, then nobody even notices. And then, especially the people that you want to see, and then you don't get like any sales from it, or it doesn't work for you at all. But then, if you tell ten of your friends, and they tell ten of their friends, now you've got two hundred people out there I'm creating something like similar kinds of items, and they're and they're all going to put their own spin on the idea. As long as you make something and you do it to the best of your ability, make it something that you're proud to put your name on. Tell every freaking buddy. Yeah, and then all your friends do it. And now it's a fad. It's like, oh, adult coloring books. Then they're the one that they're actually interested in is yours. You know, maybe. Right. I mean, it doesn't make you rich, but it could. It's like I remember one hangout I was watching. I think it was with Sam Cohen talking about the whole, uh, like when you when somebody opens a coffee shop on a corner, and then the, a guy across the street tries to open up a coffee shop. And then another guy across the street, and all this competition starts getting created. But what it does is it makes it so that now all of a sudden there's like your corner is the mecca for coffee shops in your neighborhood. So everybody comes to your neighborhood, and sometimes they go to your coffee shop, sometimes they go to the other coffee shop. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe this guy that's been going to your coffee shop goes across the street. <laughs> Whatever. Like 10 more people find out about yours because there are three others open like within a block, you know, so, I mean, that's a form of networking, I guess, like, the, I, the thing that made me think about the idea this yes. morning, and, or today when you guys were asking for ideas, I was, uh, you guys remember Jason, right, the, he's been on yeah. my show a few times, he's got the four friends, and they all went in business together to start doing like FBA, and they opened up a card store, they, they didn't open it up, it was, they bought a card store, and like a, Basically, it's a magic, the gathering shop. But um, this morning, I was I just hit him up and I was like, "Hey, man, I'm listing a bunch of magic cards. They're gonna be high value, staple stuff. They're uh, like hot, whatever. If any, if you're, if you need any of this stuff, then just let me know. Hit uh, when you buy it, and I'll give you a discount. And so he answers me back. And he's like, "No, no, no, no. Just come into the store, bring them." I need that stuff. For, I really need that kind of stuff right now. There's a big event coming up. I will give you top dollar, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, all right. So I walked in and today, and I mean, he ended up buying like, I think he spent like thirteen fifty in cash on a bunch of cards. I probably, I mean, when we got done, I was like, yeah. Uh, after we got done negotiating and everything, I mean, if I didn't know who he was, first of all, like if I was just some dude off the street, I could have brought those cards in, and he wouldn't have given me half of that for that, uh, what I brought him. But just because I am who I am, and because I hit him at, like I contacted him at a time when he really needed the stuff, and you know it was all stuff that he, like I knew exactly what he wanted, so I brought him stuff that he needed, you know, uh, and we've done business for so long. He gave me like really top dollar. I mean, I I probably could have sold everything, we figured it out, and, like, top dollar value would have been, like, 2200 bucks or something like that. And then I would have had to pay, and that's, like, with shipping and everything, I would have had to pay shipping on top of that, I would have had to pay eBay fees on top of that, I would have had to take the time to picture everything and ship everything and deal with returns, and maybe, like, half of the stuff that I brought him was stuff that would sell relatively quickly and I knew that and he was buying all this other stuff that I knew it would take me forever to sell 
<laughs> I mean, I've tried to sell, do stuff that I've had listed in the past that didn't sell for months. You know, I mean, yeah, it, they were $100 cards, but, I mean, I could either take a quarter of that to hopefully sell to another reseller who's willing to sit on them for six months themselves and sell them for what the card's supposed to be worth, or I could just, you know, sell it to him. And, I mean, it ended up being a pretty good deal. But, I mean, that's, yeah, that's basically what I was thinking about when I thought networking. You know, but, that's a, but, I mean, that's a really good example of having a place to go that you know where you can go to sell specific, you know, I've got people like that, like a guy that's got a video game store that he knows what I do for a living, so he knows I'm going to look stuff up. He knows not to rip me off, yep. you know, that I, that I know what my stuff's worth. I know what he can get for it, that I understand eBay fees and and all that kind of stuff, you know, what because he sells a lot of his stuff online, too, you know, that I leave him some meat on the bone, and it's a, it's a real good relationship. Yeah, well, I've got video game stores like that, too. I've got a few different video game stores like that, actually. But, I mean, places where, you know, I'll walk in and, uh, I mean, I can fix an X, like, they'll have an Xbox that they need fixed or something, you know, and I'll charge them, like, 20 or 30 bucks, and it's like, don't even worry about it, just pay me later, and then, like, a week later, I'll come in with a stack of video games that I need buffed, you know, and that's, like, two or three bucks a game on a professional buffer, and they'll sit there, and we'll just, you know, talk and BS or whatever while he sits there and buffs them all for free because he owes me, you know, some money from something from the week before, or, you know, I'll bring them a bunch of games that are kind of like, in my opinion, stuff that's not worth selling, you know, for me, right. like, I don't want to sit there and sell a bunch of $5 games, but I could bring them to him, he'll give me a couple bucks of pop for them, and, you know, it's, or, like, I cleaned out a pawn shop one time, I got six boxes of old video games, and most of them ended up being, like, sports games and just junk stuff, but, you know, it's not, I don't even think I could have sold them on eBay, and took them to one of my shops, and they will buy anything. But, I mean, when you're talking about 300 games, you know, they're paying 10 cents, 20 cents, a dollar here and there for certain ones, you know. And I just, I cherry-picked the stuff that I knew I could get, like, $10 or more for. Brought them the rest, I ended up with, like, $200 in store credit, you know, just because I knew that what kind of stuff they'd be looking for. And then they were happy. They remembered me the next time that I came around. That's pretty awesome. What's that? I said that's pretty awesome. Yeah. But, I mean, I guess that's part of networking too, knowing where to go for that kind of stuff. Books are a big one for me. God, I, it's, I don't like selling books. I mean, they're it's cool I, when you sell a when you find a book for fifty cents and it sells for thirty bucks, but it just sucks staring at them, waiting for them to sell. Sometimes, you know. And, I mean, if I if I'm at a garage sale, and I pay you know, $10 for 400 books or whatever because they just want them out of their house. Mm -hmm. I can either sit there and go through them all or I can take them to a local bookstore and, you know, get a couple hundred bucks for them. And maybe it's even in trade, you know, but if I get store $200 store credit, I can find something that I know that I can flip really quick for 50 bucks, 30 bucks. Right. You know? So, I mean, that's just easier for me than sitting there spending two days, three days going through everything, trying to cherry pick everything and end up still donating most of the stuff to the Goodwill. I've got a couple of friends here in town that have a, a textbook, a physical brick and mortar textbook store. But they also, they started out selling on Amazon before they had the brick and mortar. And um, they started out selling on Amazon. And they still continue to sell on Amazon in addition to having the brick and mortar store. So they'll buy any book. And I haven't been in there probably a year or so, but um, I used to go hit the junk stores, pick up good textbooks, pick up whatever, you know, have $20 in a copy paper box full of really good books. I knew what they looked for with sales ranking. They would give me about 60, 70% of FBA value, which by the time you take up fees and everything, it was awesome. You know, they knew that I could sell them on Amazon if I wanted to, so they had to give me a little more than what they give the average Joe. But, you know, that 20 bucks worth of books, I could flip into $200, and it was literally an hour's worth of work, you know. I mean, that was what I did. That's exactly what I did with those magic cards today, you know. I mean, I could have gotten a little – I could have gotten more, you know, but I took 60% of the value just in cash, on the spot, I have to deal with that crap, you know, and I do that sometimes. I mean, I – 
Meanwhile, I listed like 30 or 40 cards this morning before I even went to this place, and I've still got a stack of them left that I've got to finish uh, putting up tonight and probably finish them tomorrow, actually, but we'll see. I don't have anyone here that I take stuff to. But you have cheese. I, I do, well, I take you cheese. But, I mean, I seriously, there is no one here that I take stuff to. There were a few consignment shops that I was dealing with for a while for all my clothing. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing about clothing, though, is consignment shops tend to be super picky. Like, you have to really know exactly what they want. But if you've got, like, five or ten uh, consignment shops in your little network and you know these guys really like, like, you've got your baby clothes shop and then you've got the guys that likes the high-end men's store and then you've got the place that's more, like, sporty kind of you know, like uh, sport type clothes or women's clothes or, you know, like Plato's closets type stuff. You know, when you know what everybody's going to uh, be looking for and you get the stuff cheap enough, I mean, I could go to the weigh and pay, spend an afternoon, spend, you know, 30 or 40 bucks on 100 clothing pieces and then just do a little route the next day hitting all the consignment shops and or uh, I prefer the ones that actually buy the stuff. They give you a lot less, but like a good consignment shop's worth dealing with too. Uh, but it seems like all the then you know you can make good money, but it seems like all the consignment shops that pay the best go out of business pretty quick. So you gotta watch out for that. <laughs> My aunt Kim owns a high-end women's resale shop in Knoxville. Yeah. And. She, I thought she was crazy because she splits 50-50 and she pays the tax. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you're nuts, you know, for 50-50. And she's like, no. She said it actually brings her more business, you know, which does more because she respects, you know, the ladies. And she doesn't kill her group of ladies too, but, like, uh, like there's a lot of ladies that come there constantly to bring stuff. But she doesn't take anything... Um, I think like the cheapest things that she has are like J. Jill. Like yeah. that's that's her <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like the discount stuff. Yeah. Um I just sold a pair of J. Jill jeans. I love J. Jill. It's like one of the first be or women's clothing items I've ever sold on eBay. I listed like ten pairs of jeans because when I'm at the way and pay, I'll sit there and just grab the jeans and then every mm -hmm. once in a while I'll be like, It's women's but it's express. Or it's women's, but it's like a really good brand. So I'll just, it's like a dollar, whatever, I'll grab it. So I have like 20 or 30 pairs of jeans, so I just went ahead and listed them all. You know, they've been going. I'm surprised I haven't gotten any returns on them. That was my big, like, horror thing, because, you know, people talk about how bad women's clothing measurements are. and if you, go, if you go for the ones that stay consistent, though, like Chico's and J. Jill and things like that, yeah. Those They're ladies, people. they know exactly what size they are. They know exactly what they want. Yeah. I would, I mean, even I would probably sell that. Yeah, that's just not knowing, like me. I had three pairs of Express jeans. All three of them had different measurements. When yeah. I went to measure them, and they were the same size. So I was like, what the, what the hell? This is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> but. I don't know. Well, we I, first... would like, I would like to have... Like, I would love to own a store like she has. Like, I could do that. I think that would be fun. Plato's, be like, Plato's, Closet, Plato's Closet's a franchise, I think. Yeah, it should open yeah but that's... That's like girly. Teenagers. They got a... I tell you what, I went there and bought a couple pairs of jeans and some crap a couple weeks ago because I've outgrown all my stuff. <laughs> and I just needed something until I lose some weight. And... Their men's stuff is really, really, really reasonable. And there's never any men in there. So it's like, I mean, I know, not in our store. I don't even know where a Plato's Closet. I don't even know if there is Plato's Closet here. Oh, I know in Wilmington, they're all over the place. When We've I go got to mom's Plato's Closet everywhere. We've got a few Buffalo exchanges. There are a lot of, like, uh, mom and pop consignment places. Uh, I mean, I, I just stopped doing it because it's kind of... It, it's kind of a pain just to run around every week, you know, trying to hit them all. It's a lot of time, and then you get those weeks where you don't get any sales, or you know, they give you they've got a check for like fifteen bucks. It's like, yeah, you know, or they start 
sending, throwing stuff back. It's like, all right, this has been on the shelf for a month, you know, and they're trying to give you stuff back. It's like, well, whatever. Yeah, I'd definitely rather take less money to a shop that will just buy it outright most of the time. But if you find a good one like what you said, you know, where it's 50-50, because I've had a couple of those too. Those are great. But even then, I mean, I had this one really small consignment shop that I loved dealing with, but yeah. It was 50-50, but it was like I was making like a hundred bucks a week uh, selling stuff to her. She'd mm -hmm. have a check for me every week, and I mean it was decent. But she's like I said, picky. It helped me learn about men's clothes really fast, you know, because I would just bring her whatever at first. It's like, what do you think of all this? Just because I read a list of brands <laughs> off of the internet, you know, and I thought that that was that makes you an authority. But then she starts pointing out all the little style things and. All the different, like, this design sucks because of this, this design is awesome because of this, you know, and... It would be a good way for someone to learn clothes to exactly. find... Exactly. If you've got somebody that, like that that's willing to sit there and, like, work with you and talk to you mm -hmm. and explain stuff, it's... It, you learn fast. That's, the, it's something, that's something I see with a lot of new clothing. Not all, but a lot of new clothing resellers on. Why am I still echoing? I don't hear you echoing. Okay, it's echoing in my head. But that's something I see with a lot of new clothing resellers is they, they go strictly by brand mm -hmm. and they don't they don't even look at like, okay, that was three years ago fashion. You know, and for women fashion I think, you know, fashion changes a lot more quickly. For guys we can always kinda got a semi classic look. I mean there's there are trends but and I see people throw up stuff on, on eBay and I'm like, nobody's gonna buy that. It's not even like cool retro nineties cool or cool 80s cool, it's like 10 years ago, nobody, you know, I just, I think a lot of people try to get into an area sometimes that they, you know, I mean, you have to know something about fashion, you know, to sell clo to sell clothing, you really do, and you have to kind of be on top of them, that's where I'm lucky, my wife is kind of that person that's taught me a lot of stuff, but I still don't know much, I'm not enough to be dangerous. I know more about women's shoes than any man ever should. Laura Lee said that I should do it. She helped me with a business plan. I am never, like, I'm not in town enough. Or I guess I should say I'm gone too much to where I could never have a brick and mortar. There's no way. Is, are y'all still getting the echo? Okay, the echo's gone now. Nose picker. <laughs> nose picker. Nice. Did it go away it's, since um, I muted myself? Go ahead, try. Come back now. Don't talk crap about us while you're muted. He is. He's totally talking smack. He is. I hope some out there can read lips. What did he just say? Oh, so I didn't realize it was echoing for you, too. It's not echoing now. Yeah, it is a little bit. It's Paul. <laughs> I was probably going to put on a speaker right here and my mic's right here. Usually I've got the mic directed in the right spot where they can then, like, it does pick up the speaker, but I don't know. When we get loud, sometimes it picks it up. It sounds fine now. Okay, it's gone. Now you're loud. Huh, that's weird. Okay. Yeah. So, that's the I, I didn't hear the I didn't hear the echo, I don't Yeah, Chad was hearing it the other day too, but he had headphones in and then I couldn't get my headphones to work, so it's like whatever, you guys are living with an echo. <laughs> Deal with it. Deal. When we first okay. started started doing eBay in the late 90s, one half of our two-car garage that was in the basement, one half of it was eBay and eBay office, <clears throat> and the other half was clothing racks hanging from the the garage supports that I made out of poles. And we had, I would pick up, Tristan was kind of my clothing person when we'd go hit yard sales, and she'd pick up anything that was halfway decent that was like a buck or whatever, and then we had a clothing consignment store there in town. We'd take it all, too, and we'd pick up a check once a month. I mean, some months it'd be seven or eight hundred dollars, and we had only spent, you know, thirty, forty, fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. so, yes. You know, and then we started out selling jeans on eBay. That was one of the things we sold, and then I saw that market just quickly tank in about a three or four year period, and just kind of got out of that. Back then, you could sell Levi. I mean, you could get twenty five, twenty nine, ninety nine for a plain Jane pair of Levi's was awesome. But. Well, depending on who you talk to, you can still get that. But I don't believe it because I never do. <laughs> I, I usually make uh, lots. 
I mean, if you've got if you're still getting them for a dollar a pair, you've got ten pairs of Levi's that are the same size. I mean, three or four pairs of Levi's that are the same size, whatever. Like if you go to a garage sale and you're buying a bunch of jeans, usually the brands are similar and the size is the same. Right. One person's pair of jeans that they're selling. If you can get five or six pair that are all similar in size, style, and brand, then you can get, you know, five or ten dollars a pair. That's fine to pay a dollar a piece for them. Well, when we go to the store, like my kids who have decided they hate me because every time I buy them new jeans, they grow. But I buy them four and five pairs at a time. It's like you need, you know, this many pairs of jeans, I think, anyways. You know, so I get, they'll find the pair that they like, and then they go and they get like four or five pairs. Yep. So it makes sense to, to do them and, you know, never thought about buying them on eBay. Yeah. It's kind of, kind of bad. I should try that. Yeah, I mean, they sell a lot of... It's weird about used clothes, though. It's not all used clothes on eBay. They sell new with tag stuff, and it's <laughs> cheaper than Ross. Yeah, don't buy I the. Get, right. I go to I get I seriously get all of their jeans pretty much at Kohl's, and That's... I go whenever the you know it's the twenty percent off, and you get the ten percent or the ten dollars for every fifty dollars you spend. And... That's where Gabe. Uh, Gabe's it's like. Cheap. Gabe's like twenty seven inch, twenty six inch waist or something like twenty nine inch like insane. I'm like he's like just skinny. I mean he's literally a toothpick. So he has to get like the really slim. Is. Slim longs, and that's the only place we can really find him is Coles. He's like super skinny. Yeah, he is. He, God, he gets that from me. <laughs> <laughs> totally does. I was skinny too till I hit about 13, 14, and I just got a little chubby. And I've been up and down over the years since then. So, how do you guys form business relationships and connections with local places? Almost every single local business connection that I've started has either been through a friend who finds out what I do and who knows somebody, like it's a friend of a friend or a girlfriend of a friend or whatever, or just places that I shop at. You know, you shop at some place long enough, then you get to know the people that work there, you get to know the owners. They're even Goodwill, or not Goodwill so much, but, well, I mean, they're the Goodwills around here a lot of them know me, and they're friendly with me. They're not like, yeah, we'll give you a deal. Hey, no, but like, there are thrift stores that I go into that if they see me, then sometimes they'll just be like, hey, we saw this box of video games, or we saw this or that, something that they know that I would look at or be interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, man, we didn't bother going through them yet just in case you – came by today. Do you want to look at these and make us an offer on them so we don't have to deal with it? And I mean, I've gotten some pretty killer stuff that way. You know, I mean, boxes of video games for ten, twenty dollars. Uh, you know, what else? Like electronics and stuff. You know, like if I see like a laser printer or something. You know, most of the time I'll be like, oh no, 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 no. nobody's in the back room. With me, it's like, uh, well, yeah, let me go grab it real quick and I'll just put a price on it for you. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I think most of my relationships, most of my networking has been done by just, as you can tell, I am a talkative person, and I've really never met a stranger, and I will talk to a freaking fence post. Um, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, when I meet somebody for the first time and it annoys the crap out of my wife, you know, somewhere in the first 15 minutes of conversation, I'm going to ask them what they do for a living just because it's going to network into – you know, well, I own a company that, you know, has whatever, and then you tell them what you do, and they go, oh, we got a whole back room full of, like one time a guy goes, we just replaced all our rack servers for our software company, you know, would you be interested? And that turned out to be a great deal, you know, all because I asked what they did and told them what I did for a living. You know, it used to be, I think in the very beginning, it used to be kind of embarrassed, you know, because back then you were just considered a, a junk dealer, you know, it wasn't even cool to be an eBay seller or whatever, not that it's necessarily cool now, but you know what I mean. Um... You know, and I was probably a little more timid about it, but, and, you know, just I talk to anybody and everybody. You know, you're at a party, and they go, what do you do for a living? And you tell them what you do, and, the, and nine times out of ten, I got a garage full of stuff. Do you want to come by and look at it sometime? We're not ever going to get around to having a yard sale. Yeah, yeah. I've and never you, had that, but I've 
I get that a lot. Yeah. That just like, oh. depends on the kind of people that you hang out with, you know. Well, and then you know, and then they go, "You, what else in there? Well, it's a bunch of beanie babies." I'm like, "Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll give you a call." Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> And I know you, there actually still is a little bit of money in Beanie Babies, but... There is. The Disney Beanies I've done really well with. They do good on FBA, so... With, if they still have the tags. I was, I was reading the chat. What's going on in the chat? Sue asked Joe if he had any local people he networked with. She wants to steal his networks, peoples. She's gonna steal them all. <laughs> Tristan, Tristan said that when your kids were little, anytime they anytime they got the hot new toy, they would ask you if you were gonna sell it. Oh, they would like cry. Please don't put it on eBay. Please don't, don't put it on eBay. My like, kids I, would probably be like, "Hey, you know, <laughs> put this on eBay if you need some cash." Our children are money, money, money. Yeah, I'm the guy. My, my okay. daughter is like. She just looks at me. She's like, "Oh my God, that's such and such. I would really love to have that toy." <laughs> <laughs> that would be so. You'd be the best daddy ever. So we great. Do. I've always wanted one of them. <laughs> I would love you so much. Yep. And then it's like now they're it's going on Amazon. Oh. Or Dusty would recognize. I just want to be pretty. <laughs> um. We do our dirty, we do our dirty Santa gift exchange with my family and all the, you know, the cousins and all my brothers and sisters. And there's like usually like 25 of us, and I'm the one guy that sits there every Christmas with the Amazon seller app out. So when it comes around, I'm like, oh, it's a whatever brand new in the package. I'm like, scan the barcode, and that could be worth a lot more than 25 bucks. Yeah, I would. <laughs> if they just all sit there and shake their heads, they're like, are you gonna scan everything? I'm like, yeah. You are terrible. Although I did do that. Is it either at my mom's or John's mom's? I was like, hey, this hasn't been opened. I would never, ever <laughs> sell anything that I got as a gift. That would just be... When John's... Okay, John's parent, or his mother, gave me, like, some dishes and silverware and stuff from John's grandparents. His grandmother passed away. And his grandfather moved in with his parents before he passed away. And one of the things that she gave me was the poppy red clubware pots and pans. And I was like, would you hate me if I sold those? Because those were Granny's dishes. And she's like, no, no. If you can get money for them, get money for them. There might be more. She's like... (laughs) She, she's that person. Like she gave me, oh, she she gave me a bunch of cricket cartridges to sell for, or, um, on Amazon, and I was like, okay, I'll, yeah, I'll just give you whatever they sell for. No, 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 you you can keep it. Just sell them. It's great. She thinks it's awesome. So anything she gets, she's like, you have that thing on your phone still? Here, what's this worth? My father-in-law is pretty good at like. You know, hey, do y'all think you? I'm cleaning out. Was cleaning out the closet. Do you think I can do? You can do anything. But his stuff is like, he goes, hey, I got all these monitors, computer monitor monitors that like 12 years ago at the IRS they were getting rid of, and they're like the old paperweight like or boat ARTs, whatever. And I know there is value actually in some of those, but they're the got to be the certain. And I'm like, there's a reason the IRS just gave them away to y'all, and because they couldn't put them in a land the landfill, you <laughs> need to. I said, you just need to put those out on your recycling day or when they have community recycling where they take crap. And I was like, no, thanks, but no. Yeah, there's a line somewhere. What is, Laura Lee, what are you talking about pop-ups? Pop-ups. I don't know what, I don't know what pop-ups is. Well, let's Google that. Pop up campers, pop up Christmas tree, or pop up blocker. Yeah, the only thing I knew was pop up camper. Just because I was thinking about the next time I go down to Tennessee, I need to. Oh, Sue, she's phenomenal. She is, she is the best. Um, I was like, I need to take the pop up camper down so that John can finish remodeling the inside. 
but I can't drive with a trailer, so that kind of rules that out. Why? I can't. I don't know. Could like, you, I drive, figure, could you drive? I would figure out how to jackknife. Could you drive? Nine, could you drive ninety-five miles an hour? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My Everybody. Volvo has a very high safety rating, so it's fine for me to drive fast. You know, one thing I don't do, just to change the subject back to our Thank original you. subject. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people that. Um, I don't know why I was thinking about this earlier. You know, I, lo I know a lot of people say they give up business cards. I don't, mm -hmm. and I and, and the reason I don't is because I I just want to look like the guy that buys junk. I don't want to look like the guy that's actually making a living doing it. Um, it's the same reason I don't dress up when I go picking. I don't wear any jewelry or watches or pimp chains. Not that I own any pimp chains, but. You know, I, I, totally I rock the pimp chains. I dress down and I wear my raggedy old cargo shorts in the summertime and my flip flops and a wife beater and you know, hey, what do you got for sale? You know, I mean, that sounds like what you wore to dinner. What I wear to dinner? Mm-hmm. Well, that's only at a fancy restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's wow. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> But you know, it's it's and that and that's part of my reason. I mean, we can still exchange numbers. I, I think you know, not that there's not a need for business cards, and that does work for some people. I mean, I think there's more. I'm better off with keeping track of stuff in an iPhone. I've got literally, I could go through my phone book here, and it's like Joe out in Athens buys electronics. Bill sold me the whatever is looking for, and I make notes next to. I'll put the right first name, but then I in the last name field in the address book. I'll put who they were and you know something I can remember it. And for me, that's a lot better tool. So it's kind of twofold. Number one, I wouldn't keep up with business cards. Um, mm -hmm. Number two, it's it's part of my just you know it's funny because until you get to know somebody, I've I've encountered that a lot. You know, some people if they think you're making a living, they're going to want a little more. You know, if they think you're a real business, it's just part of my my game, I guess. But I don't know. It works. It works for me. So, right on, right on. I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence. I think business cards are good for, like, if you're like if you're trying to network with other resellers. I think business cards can make you seem more professional in their eyes. Like, if you're trying to find, you know, like uh, just people to hang with or you know people to bounce things off of that kind of thing. I think business cards make you seem more legit maybe for them but right. yeah I wouldn't give a business card to somebody that I was trying to buy stuff off of yeah I would think I mean even if you had the free Vista print where it says on the back you know get your free business cards from Vista print I mean I think yeah. there's I think there's a time and a place and and you know if you sell I think it was cherry vintage that was saying on one of the shows in the in the chat that that she uses them. Well, yeah, she also deals in vintage clothing. That's a specialty. Kind oh, I of think thing. that would totally. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a time and a place for me. The guy that that buys junk, or as some of my friends affectionately call me, I you know, I'm a shit flipper. That's their terminology for me. You know, I would rather be known as that guy that's the flipper than, you know, the guy that has a has a business doing reselling. And you know, I don't want to be an antique dealer. I don't want to be a a dealer. I'd just rather stay under the radar, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah. yeah. So. Makes yeah, sense. I mean, I, the people that know me know what I do. I'm not quiet about it. and But I don't have business cards, and, you know, I dress pretty good most of the time. You know, like, I'm not a, above cargo shirts and a, or cargo shorts and flip-flops on a summer day, but, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's... I don't know. I feel like most people don't care what you look like. When uh, I don't feel like I have to dress down in my neighborhood to get right, right, people, right. You know, and I also feel like when you dress up a little bit, then it makes it easier to talk to people, and then they kind of like you can hit. I can hit it off with them better. It seems like like that's, quicker. That's just and, me. Uh, maybe also when you come off as a little bit more professional, it seems like they maybe. They just real once they feel like you know what you're talking about, especially garage sales and stuff like that, then they take you more seriously, and then they're mm -hmm. not so they're not trying so hard to, you know, 
they don't think you're somebody they can pull something over on, so they're more likely to deal with you. Right. Like, I, I don't know. I've got... A, it's just my take on it. I feel like it's a little bit different depending on... Maybe it's just my, where I'm at, you know, just this area. It does. It depends on your area. I mean, you're definitely in a different area than Alabama, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> what? We have nice parts of town, too. Yeah. Well, we also have legal weed. I have legal weed. So I always wear my Bob Marley shirt every time I go yard sailing. No doubt. <laughs> you have to have your whole Rastafarian thing going on. <laughs> my daughter was trying to pick out a front plate for her car. <laughs> for her new car, and she picked out one. I don't know what it was. It was like this kind of like fan, really psychedelic looking looking pattern thing, and I was like, you know, if you put that in front of your car, every time you get pulled over, your car's getting searched. She's like, really? I was like, oh yeah. I was like, no, babe, I'm kidding. <laughs> These people are fantastic. Right? They're funny. What are you t- What did Dustin Coco said in quest? <laughs> did she just look? Coco yeah. said, inquiring minds want to know, Danica, what did Dusty wear to dinner? <laughs> oh, I think you should put that up in your group. Well, considering <laughs> that there, there was a, there's only four restaurants in that town, one of which is the Mexican don't eat at restaurant, unless you want to race home. The other one is the Chinese buffet. That they doesn't don't, even sell Coke. <laughs> they don't serve Coke. It's like, what would you like to drink? And you're like... Coke? No, sweet tea or water. <laughs> <laughs> you can literally only get sweet tea or water at the so, Chinese place. And then, and then the couple behind us was having a total discussion about <laughs> about doctor hopping and how they got, how many how many pills they got from different doctors and talking about meth. And I was like, oh my god, it was pretty awesome. So what did I? I probably I think did probably you did. not. Jeans and a sweatshirt. Yes, and then we were all dying because it was like 100 degrees. Yeah, then they had the heater cranked up. Oh, man, that was so funny. Because I didn't know what they were talking about. I was like, what are they? Doctor shopping. Doctor That's shopping. That's what they called it, doctor shopping. And I was like, "Don't you? doesn't your insurance have a thing where you go, hey, I'm looking for a doctor? You know, oh, like that's God. what I'm sitting there thinking. <laughs> and they're talking hey. about like. Getting hey. pain pills from every doctor in town. And <laughs> I'm looking for some Oxycontin. <laughs> I got Oxy from this guy. Yeah, Good it was um, very rural, small town, Tennessee. Like, Walmart is the Friday night place to go. Like, they dress up. The girls have on, like, their skirts and do their hair and makeup and stuff to go to Walmart on Friday night. <laughs> it's that town. It's a sad place. Yeah, stay away from those. Yeah. We went but to anyway. Thrift Daddy said my in-laws only go to Chinese buffets. <laughs> yeah, I avoid Chinese buffets these days. I used to like them, but not so much anymore. I don't know. I go when they're serving regular dinner, if I go at all, but if they have a buffet, they're just, there are no good ones right here. They're scary. This is so Americanized, like, I am certain that they just use ketchup, and, I mean, <laughs> like, What's for it, dessert? What's for dessert? Oh, it's orange jello, red jello, and bloody bananas. Dusty <laughs> eats those, you know the bloody bananas? The banana slices with the red stuff? The strawberry sauce. I hate that. I call them bloody oh. bananas. There was nothing else on the dessert thing. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> it, was, it was healthy. You can't, I mean, how bad can you screw no. up a banana? That just sounds disgusting. By <laughs> pouring red high fructose corn syrup on it. I know, it right? Yummy. I'm pretty sure it's not good. And you ate something with marshmallows. I don't know what that was, but the marshmallows were good. I don't know. 
I think like, that was that, that was that salad that everybody's great aunt always brings to the Christmas dinner. You know that chunky green looking salad with marshmallows. <laughs> I don't think that I uh, have eaten marshmallows since you told me what they were. <laughs> Dude, it's gross, right? I, I yeah. That's disgusting. It is ground up animal bones. Yeah. I mean, not that I really care that much. I, I'll eat anything. And, <laughs> I mean, I feel, feel like my ew. reaction when you first told me was pretty classy. Yeah, it's gross. Yeah, it's like, oh, wow, there is some nutritional content <laughs> after all. <laughs> <laughs> Protein! Yay! And what? Oh. Marshmallows. Marshmallows. They're disgusting. We're just talking about how disgusting they are. Oh, they're so good. gross. Good night, Sue. Night, Sue. Where did you... F oh, <laughs> Larry said, what did you find in your food that makes you not eat at the Chinese buffet? Uh... Ew, if it's gross, don't tell me. It doesn't taste good. Oh, I'd rather okay. make Chinese at home when I know exactly what's going in there. Chad, you are so joking. Golden Corral. Oh, yeah. Chad, Chad actually, his Golden Corral, ours here, actually closed down for several years, I think for health reasons, and then they brought it back about a year or so ago, and I haven't been, been there since. His Golden Corral was actually pretty good. I mean, all the food was fresh. They had, like, pot roast that was real meat. They had steak that night. They had, but, yeah, Chad eats, like, fried chicken, and he only eats drumsticks. <laughs> I was like, why don't you just get the child's buffet? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Golden Corral has actually tuned up its image quite a bit. It's not it's not a crap hole. It's a decent place to eat, and they do a really good job of, like, everyone that I've been to, but I just I don't go to buffets that much. The only kind of buffets I really do now are Indian buffets. I love oh, Indian food. I love Indian food. Love yeah. it. There's this mm. one place in town that does... It's an Indian restaurant slash microbrewery. What? And, like, three or four years ago, they won the Great American Beer Festival with their IPA. So I just go for the IPA. Where? Uh, Yak and Yeti. That's hilarious. Yeah. Do you I would go sure? solely for the name. Yeah. It's, I just, I just bought... Awesome. I just picked up the twelve pack of Terrapin. It's the three of each beer. It's four different IPAs. Yeah, the little twelve pack thing they have out. I just picked that up yesterday. Oh, nice. I need more root beer. I like Terrapin. They have good, good IPAs. Yeah, I'm summing it up tonight. Oh wow, really? Hells to the year. Are you celebrating your winnings today by having a Keystone Light? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I used to love Keystone Light. I'm just busting your butt. Um, I don't know, man. I can I can drink Keystone all night, but that's kind of like what I learned to drink on because that's what my dad would always drink. Yep. <laughs> He'd bring a 12 pack home, and anytime there was beer left in the 12 pack, we always knew that that was fair game. So we'd sneak down when he was passed out and <laughs> take them and drink them and put the cans, put the empty cans back. <laughs> That's so awesome. I cut my beer drinking teeth on. <laughs> that was uh, actually what the manager of the McDonald's that I worked at when I was in a junior in high school, that was the only thing, because he was like 22, that was the only <laughs> thing he would drink, so that was the only thing he would buy for us. So that's what I got started on was Keystone Light. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we made it an hour officially without talking about beer drinking or anything illicit, so... We did really good. We did. We totally stayed on topic, pretty much, for the most part. Kind of, sort of. In our... Hey. Hey, we actually hit on some pretty good points, though. I feel like we touched... For we, us? We talked about the stuff that needed to be talked about, and we mentioned the important little points of the whole topic in general, I guess. We I mean, I know I talked about the topic. Yeah. I think that should be celebrated. That should be. Let's celebrate <laughs> right now. <laughs> I have to go to the I have to go to the fridge. I'll go get one in a minute. Okay. Um so I guess that's it for us tonight, guys. Um we are you going to do a show tomorrow? If you are, I swear I will not go back to sleep. 
<laughs> I think it's probably going to be Wednesday. I did want to mention, though, uh, in like 20 minutes, my buddy Chris Piles has got his show. Oh, that's right. The FBA Motivators. So if you guys are bored or you want to get some M motivation, some Amazon uh, talk going, I mean, honestly, he's always got a like, big panel, and there's always a lot of good information being shared. I might hop over there, to be honest, uh, see if he's got a extra spot. But I want to – he's – he always puts on a good one. So that's the name of his channel, too, Chris Piles. He, he was here earlier, so yeah, if you he scroll was... up, scroll up on his name. I don't know if he's still here. He was in um, the audience. Hold on. If I click on his name. It's Chris Piles. You know, up. I can go to his channel, and I can post links since I'm a moderator, can I? Oh, there you go. Yeah, do that. Can you? Here. Y'all go check him out. I think I can. We're about to find out. Yeah, but his, uh, he does a, he does good hangouts, and they're fun, and a lot of really good information. He's got some guys on there that are legit, like, big-time sellers, and he's also got some kind of beginner sellers and some intermediate sellers. Good range. So, I mean, I like his show a lot. He's Chris is really nice. So That, that too. Yeah. yeah. And you uh, guys... tomorrow morning, Deb show, resellers too. Yeah. I, wait, hold on. So I'm, that's probably why I won't be doing a show in the morning. Uh, yeah, Deb's Tuesday, Deb's Tuesday, Thursday, right? No, just Tuesday morning. I thought it was Tuesday and Thursday. Is it Tuesday and Thursday? I thought it was just Tuesday. Deb, where are you? She were in the audience. She was here earlier. Oh. I saw her posting. Yeah, she oh. was earlier. I don't know if she's still here or not. Maybe Joe, we do need to do one when the weather breaks um, before I leave again. I'm down. I'm down. Down, yo. Down. Okay, so I will see you guys Wednesday morning if Paul does a show. Um, if not, then we'll see you guys back here next Monday night. And as always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or whatever requests for show stuff, put it in the Profit Talk Facebook group. Hit the thumbs up. Or yeah. thumbs down. Thumbs up, subscribe, all that Hit good. The subscribe button. Hit that if you so, haven't. Go tell Wade and Dana happy birthday. Yep. And we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Uh.